This is part 14 titled Living the In Christ Life in the sermon series on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Be enriched as you listen. All right. You know, we've been uh, studying God's Word. We've been spending time in God's Word talking about uh, our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. And uh, we've uh, actually spent, I think, 13 Sundays on this topic. Uh, We've got two more messages today and next Sunday. We're going to talk about living the in Christ life. How do you live out of this identity uh, and this inheritance that you and I have in Jesus Christ? If you remember when we began this series, we used an analogy of, uh, of a slum kid. You know, imagine a slum and a little child, a kid there, uh, often having, you know, just abandoned there, having no hope for the future, having nothing to his name, uh, living moment by moment, day by day, just abandoned. But imagine a rich man, a very wealthy family, comes and adopts this orphan child, uh, takes this child into their family, makes this child part of the family, gives this child a family name, uh, bestows on this child everything uh, that, that any child in that family would have, what has happened to that child? Its identity, its entire life has been changed. Everything has been changed. And this in some way expresses what God has done for you and me In Jesus Christ. Amen? We were like that, spiritually speaking. Completely orphaned, abandoned, had nothing to our name. Depraved, corrupt, sinful. Bible says we were dead in our sins and our transgressions. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our sins. He picked us up and he made us his sons and daughters. Amen? Amen? And he made us his own. And he said, you be my heirs and my joint heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. I mean, he elevated us to the position, the highest position that he could possibly give to you and me. And that's what he's done for us spiritually. But then go back to that analogy and imagine that little child, uh, you know, growing up in this wealthy family. If this child runs back to the slum. That's my home. That's what I'm used to. And goes around rummaging in the garbage and trying to do all that. You know, it'll be just so out of place. It'll be as though everything that this family tried to do for that child was wasted. Because really, this child had a tremendous future that was given to it. But it's all wasted. Or... Even if live while living in this home of this wealthy family, if the child still kept thinking the way it used to think while in the slum, living there, you know, from meal to meal. So imagine the child is sitting at the table of this in this wealthy family. They have their breakfast, then take two at least, put in the pocket toward us. But why? Not sure whether they'll get anything for lunch. Still living in that orphan mentality. But you know, the sad thing is, many of us Christians, believers, we actually live like this orphan child who, although adopted into the family of God or into this wealthy family, still runs back to live in the old or still continues to think like the old. And so we fail to enjoy life the way God wants us to enjoy because we don't live out of our life in Christ so as believers we must understand our identity and understand our inheritance in Christ and not only understand it but make a deliberate choice to live out of that identity and inheritance here on earth. Are you with me? 
We must make the choice. And, and so that's what these two messages are geared towards. In helping us understand what must we do to live out of our identity and our inheritance in Christ. So let's begin with, the, with that verse of scripture that we are all familiar with. With uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. You know, uh, back in the good old days, which means somewhere in the, <laughs> the early 200s, before we had all these LED screens and projectors, we used to hear this beautiful sound of papers turning in church. Now, so let's turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Everybody open their Bible and turn. Now it doesn't happen that way. They just... You know, <laughs> you use the phone, scroll, whatever. So you don't hear that. But, but I really, really, really want all of us to let the word get into our lives. You see, there's one thing that's going to really change you and me. It's God's word. You know, it's not about the lights and the sounds. I mean, okay, yeah, if the lights and sounds make you, uh, cause you to pay attention, we'll turn the lights on <laughs> and put a color to it. But ultimately, it's the word of God that's going to change your life. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that's the truth. So uh, whatever way we can, you know, so we put it up on the screen so we could all read it. Or if you want to turn in your Bible, on your phone, do it. Or if you turn, want to turn in the physical Bible, whatever you're comfortable with, okay. But make sure you get the word of God into your life. Amen? So let's read the scripture. So that's why we emphasize it. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read 17 and 18 together, please. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. These are foundational texts to this whole series. If anyone, any person, and that includes you, any person is in Christ, he's come into this life in Christ by faith in Christ. If you are in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. You're a brand new species, new in time and new in nature, new as in not existent before, new in nature, meaning this is a species that never existed before. So you are a new creation. Old things have gone. Everything is new. God says everything about you in your spirit has been made new. And all things are from God. All things about you are from God. So that's your new identity. God has given you a new identity. He's given you a new inheritance. And our, our journey that we've made so far is discovering, uncovering this uh, identity and inheritance that we have in Christ. And if, in case you missed any of these sermons, go back and listen to it. I'd encourage you to do that. Study it. And feed your spirit with this truth. So now the question is, how do we live out of this new life that we have in Christ? I think, to put it very simply... This new life in Christ begins by us being born from above. So Jesus said this in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. He taught about being born again. Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that word, that phrase born again simply means to be born from above, to receive life from above. So here's what I want to put forward to us. Because we are born from above, we have to live from above. So how do you live this life in Christ? You have to live from above. Let's say this together. I'm born from above. And I have to live from above. So that's how you, you and I live this life in Christ. You know, in, in, in John, that same passage in John 3 and verse 13, Jesus made this interesting statement. He says, no one, has come, no one has seen the Father, but he who has come from the Father. And who, who, is, who is with the Father, who is in heaven right now. So Jesus says, look, I am here on earth, but I'm also in heaven. So you and I are like that. We are here on earth, but spiritually we are connected with Jesus. We are in Christ. You are here, but you're also in Christ. Let me repeat that. You are here, but you're also in Christ. And so the life that you and I live here, we have to live it 
out of Christ. We have to live from above. That means, when you think of yourself, don't just think of yourself as who you are in the natural. Now, you've, you, each one of us has a natural identity. We were born in a certain family. We carry a certain family name. Uh, we may have certain traits, characteristics, traits about us, about our personality. We have certain inclinations, passions, uh, things that we are good at, our expertise, our uh, accomplishments. All of that is your natural identity. But while that has its place, you and I must learn to live out of our spiritual identity and live out of what God has made available to you in the spirit. That is your spiritual inheritance. Live out of that. You have been born from above. So you have to live from above. Now, this may sound a little complicated, but I want us to try and understand this. Everything we've so far unpacked in this series about our identity and our inheritance in Christ is something God has already completed. He's already done the work. It's a finished work. So you are righteous. You are sanctified. You are a complete. It's already done. It's a finished work. But the interesting thing is this. God completes that work in the spirit. That means in Christ. He completes it. But in the natural, he tells you and me to live out of that completed work. So in the natural, we are a work in progress. But the beautiful thing is this. That we are living out. Out of that completed work. Are you with me? So just to uh, make, make these statements, make it clear, you'll see this, this contrast in Scripture. You know, we are complete, yet we are a work in progress. The Bible says, you are complete in Him. And yet on earth, it says, we are being changed from glory to so God completed the work, but now it's a, we are living out of that completed work. We are growing into that completed work. Look at some of these things. The Bible tells us we are perfected, yet we are being perfected. We have been sanctified, yet we are being sanctified. We are hidden in Christ, yet we are naked before God. Everything is visible. We are new creation. But yet we are still being renewed. We're being transformed. We are righteous, yet we are repentant. When we commit sin, we say, God, I'm sorry. I know I'm righteous in Christ, but if I sin, I say, I'm sorry, I'm repentant. I'm raised with new life, but yet I am crucified. And so we see these, these things in Scripture. I've just mentioned a few. The point is this. Why is this so beautiful? Because... The work is completed. And if the work is completed, you don't have to strive for it. You acknowledge it is completed. You act like it's completed. You live out of a completed work. So think about being sanctified. Sanctified means being set apart and holy to God. That means God has said, I've already sanctified you. I've already set you apart for myself. You are holy. Now, in our everyday life, uh, we may be struggling with sin. We may be struggling with bad habits. We may be struggling you know, with different kinds of things that you know are displeasing to God. Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's hatred. Maybe it's you know, bad-mouthing people. Maybe it's whatever. In the Spirit, in Christ, you are sanctified. You are holy. But here on earth, you're still a work in progress. How do you deal with those things? You've got to live out of the place saying, hey, I am a holy person. And because I know I'm holy, these things are not fitting for me. So I'm not going to give any room to this. You're living out of what God has completed for you. You're not trying to work your way to holiness. You're living out of a place of holiness. Because you're holy, you say no to this. You're not saying no to this in order to achieve holiness. That was granted to you by grace in Christ. Are you understanding this? Yes or no? Maybe. I'll think about it. <laughs> but this is so beautiful. 
to know that God has completed the work and I'm just walking in that completed work and saying, God, you've done it for me already. I'm going to live like it. I'm going to act like it's true. It's mine. And that's who I'm going to be. And because I'm a holy person, this, these things have no place in me. Because God has made you holy in Christ. Amen? So, understand that. That to live from above also means that we are living is to know what God has already completed for us in the spirit and to work with him to live out of that in our everyday lives. And this is what makes uh, the Christian life so powerful. It's not a striving for something. It is living out of what God has already completed for you. That's what makes it amazing. So, today, we want to, I want to present two important things the Bible teaches us in order to live from above. Two important things. And these are not new things. You know, we keep going over these things over and over again because we need to hear it. We need to be reminded of it. Two things you and I must do to live from above, to live out of this completed work, to walk in this. Number one, we need to renew our minds. Renew our minds. And second, we must walk in the Spirit. Two things we have to do. The Bible teaches us. We have to renew our mind. And we have to walk in the Spirit. If we are going to live from above. Live out of this life that we have in Christ. Live out of this identity and inheritance in Christ. So let's talk about renewing the mind. And let's read some of the scripture texts that are uh, used often here. Uh, can, you, can we go over to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24? This will come up on the screen. Let's read it out loud together, please. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22. To 24. I can hear the Bible turning. That's beautiful. Ephesians chapter 4. I also turn my Bible there. Even though I have it on my, on my iPad. Just to keep it with the old times. <laughs> Ephesians 4. 22 to 24. Let's read it please. That you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So what is the Bible saying? See, the Bible is saying you are a new man. Let's all say this. Oh, I don't know the ladies will say a new man. But let's say this again. I'm a new creation. You see, he says put on this new creation. Put on. That means let this new creation that you are in your spirit, in Christ, let it be seen on the outside. Put on. And this new creation, this is verse 24, this new creation that you are is actually the image of God. That means if you and I walk as new creation, people are going to see God. Amen. Amen. Because this new creation is in the image of God. In righteousness, in true holiness. That those are characteristics of this new creation. And so Ephesians 4.24 says, put on this new man. Put on this new creation. Let the new creation that you are on the inside be visible on the outside. Let the characteristics of God of righteousness and holiness and purity and wisdom and love, let it be seen on you. And get rid of the old. Verse 22. Put off the old man. Throw it away. Let no trace of it. Not even a smell of it be on you. Put off the old man. This old way of life. Which was corrupt. Sinful. Evil. Wicked. Get rid of it. But that middle verse. Verse 23. Gives you the key. How do you put off and put on? How do you put off the old man? Put on the new. Verse 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind or in the very attitude of your mind, in the very core of your mind. 
Be renewed. Change your thinking. So going back to that analogy of that little child who was adopted in this family, that kid has to change its thinking. Stop thinking you're an orphaned, abandoned, homeless, penniless child. Start thinking that you are a son of this house. That you have been blessed with everything this family has put upon you. When they ask you your name, you give the name of this family. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the very core, the essence of how you think. Are you with me? So as believers, that's the first thing we must do. Change your thinking. Stop thinking like the old. Stop thinking contrary to the word of God. And align your thinking to what the Bible says. If you and I are going to live from above. Right? Another classic passage is Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. These are familiar verses, but let's read them again. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Let's read them out loud. Let's go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So Paul is telling us, you know, don't conform yourself to the world. Don't pattern yourself uh, of this world, uh, to the ways of this world. But be transformed. Have a metamorphosis in your living. That word transform, metamorpho, which is the English word metamorphosis, is what we say or use when we talk about a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. So saying, believer, have a metamorphosis in your way of life. Instead so of being conformed to the world. The way the, wo the world works and the way the world does its things. It's of being conformed to the world. Have a metamorphosis in your way of living. Be transformed. How? By the renewing of your minds. That means retrain your thinking. Tra train yourself to think differently. You say, what, 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 what does this really mean? And I think the best passage that, 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 that highlights this for us is in Isaiah 55. Uh, and this, this will come up on the screen. Isaiah 55, it's a, a verse of 7 through 9. Uh, very familiar passage. I'm just going to mention it and go forward. Isaiah 55, 7 through 9, God says, Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So there are two things God is telling you and me to let go. Our ways and our thoughts. That means your way of doing things, the ways of this world, let it go. And your thoughts, the way you think, let it go. And let him come to me. For my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And then he goes on to say... So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. Meaning God's word brings into your possession the ways and thoughts of God. And God is saying, you let go of your ways and your thoughts and come to me. Implying, take on my ways and my thoughts. So what does it mean to walk with a renewed mind? It means that in every situation, you and I make a deliberate choice to take on the ways and thoughts of God. Letting go of our ways and our thoughts. Are you with me so far? In every situation, we make a deliberate choice. What are the ways and thoughts of God? Let me walk according to that. Let's talk some practical examples. Suppose you, there comes a time when you face a crisis in life. Something terrible has happened. Unexpected. Now, at that moment, you can react to it 
res- or react in that situation, one of two ways. You, can, you and I can react in the natural, and that would be the immediate response for all of us. Oh, you know, you feel bad, you feel discouraged, you feel upset, you feel anxious, all of that. That's the natural. But you and I make a deliberate choice in that situation to think according to the ways and thoughts of God. To live out, to live from above, to live according to our identity and inheritance in Christ. And you know the Bible. The Bible says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. So in that moment, you say, God, I know I'm faced with this situation, but your word says, you always cause me to triumph in Christ. Always includes this situation that I'm facing. You will bring me out triumphant. So your immediate thing, instead of thinking, instead of thinking this is the end of my life, this is announcing my defeat. This is the end of everything. You think, no. I see myself coming out triumphant because God always causes me to triumph in Christ. You say, well, that sounds delusional. No, that's called believing the word of God. To, to, to be delusional is to believe something that doesn't exist. But here we are believing God who exists and his word, which is truth. You cannot be more right than believing God and his word. But it requires a renewing of our thinking. It requires us letting go of our ways and our thoughts and embracing the ways and thoughts of God. So that in that situation, instead of you seeing yourself as a victim, and so you seeing yourself as a person who's defeated, you say, God is bringing me out triumphant. My God causes me to triumph in Christ. Are you with me? Yes or no? I might be the only person who's excited in this whole auditorium. <laughs> but I'm excited because this is God's word. And this is how we're supposed to think. Think in line with his ways and his thoughts. Not according to our ways and our thoughts. His ways, his thoughts. Or, let's say when it comes to giving. Suppose you're in a situation where uh, you meet somebody and you feel God saying in your heart, give that person a certain amount of money. Now, the natural is, oh God, I can do a lot with that money for myself. I can do this and I can do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh God, I need to do, you know, I need, I need it for myself. You know, in the natural, we have our own thinking going. But as a person who believes in God, who believes in his word, immediately you remember the word. The word says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Immediately remember the word. The word says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over, will men give into your bosom. Meaning, when you give, you're not losing. And God's put in your heart. Give that person. So, the natural man may want to keep, may want to hold, and, and all of that. I'm not against saving and investing and all of those things. I'm just saying, God has spoken to you to give to somebody. What are you going to do? You have your nat- we have our natural way of thinking, our ways, but then there's the word of God. And you make a deliberate choice. Say, God, you put in my heart to bless that person. And, 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 and there are many scriptures we can go to. You know, Proverbs 3 says, you know, with all not good from him who needs it, when it is in the power of your hand to do it. That means if you've got the ability to bless somebody, do it. And so many things, so many scriptures you, know, you can think about. He who gives to the poor, Lends to the Lord. And he will repay. So imagine this. When you give to the Lord, give to the poor, you're lending to God. How many of you like to lend to God and hope 
God is obligated to you. That's what the proverb says. He who gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he will pay back. So I'm just mentioning these few scriptures. So at that moment, God is putting your heart, bless somebody, and there is this natural versus spiritual thinking happening. What must you do? Do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you are making a deliberate choice to take on the ways and thoughts of God. You say, okay, God, your word says this. You put in my heart to, uh, to, to, you know, to bless that person. I'm going to give. And it's more blessed to give than to receive. I'm going to do it. So what are you doing? You're living from above, not from below. And then you'll walk and experience the fulfilling of God's word in your life. So here's the first key for us to live from above. It's to live, to renew our mind. It's to live according to the ways and thoughts of God. And we have to make a deliberate choice to do this. That in every situation, you ask yourself, what, what is my identity? What is my inheritance in Christ? And how can I live out of that to face this problem? To address this situation? How can I do that? For example, if somebody's there who irritates you all the time. And like, you just you say, God, there's no, only God can love him, nobody else. And then you've got to deal with this person. What do you do? What is, what is your inheritance in Christ? The Bible says, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. That means God has poured his love into your heart. He's given you the capacity to love with his love. So what do you do? You say, Father, I know I find it difficult to love this person. That person might be irritating me. But your word says, the love of God is poured into my heart by the Holy Spirit. And part of my inheritance is life in the Spirit. That means I live out of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives me the capacity to love as God loves. So Lord, I release your love to this person. I choose to love this person with your love. I choose to do what your love would do in this situation. Even though my flesh and my mind would be crying out differently. I choose to walk in the love of God. What are you doing? You're living from above, not from beneath. You're living from what you have in Christ in that situation. Amen? So that's the first key. To live from above. To live with a renewed mind. To take on the ways and thoughts of God. And to live by the ways and thoughts of God. Now, I want to, you know, mention something here. Because somebody can listen to a message like this and take it on a tangent. You know, when you want to drive on the road, you got to stay in the middle of the road. If you go to either extremes, you're going to fall into the ditch. And sometimes Christians, they listen to half a sermon and they think they know everything. And what happens? They end up in a ditch. So somebody listening to this sermon will say, well, therefore, you know, I don't need to study. Right? Because the Bible says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, power and love. I have a sound mind. I know everything, teacher. Don't teach me anything. I have a sound mind. Or they can take another scripture. God has made Christ to be wisdom, to me wisdom, which is true. Christ is my wisdom. Teacher, you don't teach me anything. Who are you? Christ is my wisdom. So, you know, people can take scriptures and go off on a, into a ditch. And sadly, it happens. So I have to make this statement, which is, we have to be spiritually minded. You've got to walk in wisdom. You've got to know how to live right on earth. And just because you're spiritually minded, which makes us a friend of God, just because you're spiritually minded, doesn't absolve you and me from just being practical. So we've got to learn to be spiritually minded and earthly wise. I'll just make that statement. There's a book out there. You can get it off our church website and read it. Being spiritually minded and earthly wise. Because there's this balance. That means... You know, for example, simple thing. The Bible does say he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. But that does not mean you close your eyes when you cross the street. No. It's your responsibility. 
Then you're going to cross the street. So keep your eyes open. Look left. Look, uh, look, look right. Look left. And then cross. Don't just say, oh, angels are with me. Come on, Gabe. Come on, Mac. Let's go. <laughs> You'll probably end up as a wet patch on the road, you know. You don't do that. It is true. You live by the word of God. You're walking in the ways and thoughts of God. But God's given us a mind to engage rightly with wisdom in the natural world. So there's got to be this happy blend of knowing how to apply spiritual truth to everyday life. And that's called wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. Say it again, wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply spiritual truth to everyday life. And sometimes believers lack this. And so they end up on the ditch, in the ditch on either side. So I needed, I needed to say that, but understand. The first key is to live with a renewed mind. You all with me? The second one, and I'm just going to touch on this very briefly, not spend too much time here, is for us to walk in the Spirit. Let's read a few verses from Galatians 5, and then we will wrap up. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at a few verses here. Verse 16, 18, and 25. Galatians 5. Verses 16, 18, and 25. Okay. Galatians 5, verse 16. Let's read it together. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 18. And if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So three things the scriptures, these verses tell us, and we've just picked out these three verses. It tells us to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, and to live in the Spirit. So, live in the Spirit. That means He's the source of life. Everything you're doing is springing from Him. Live in the Spirit. As an example, we live in this atmosphere. If we take a human person out of this atmosphere into outer space is not going to live. I mean, without all the support systems. If you take my wife, we live in here. That means our life is dependent on this atmosphere that we live in. You take him out, gone. So live in the spirit simply means your life is flowing from the Spirit, what you're doing, everything comes from Him. You are dependent on His environment. The environment of the Holy Spirit. Live in Holy Spirit environment. Just like how in the natural, you and I live in this atmosphere, in the environment of this atmosphere. It's got the right blend of oxygen and nitrogen and other gases, and all of that, but it's very important. That blend is so important because that's the atmosphere in which we live. Similarly for us, the atmosphere in which we live spiritually is the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Our life comes from Him. Live in the Spirit. And even as you live in the Spirit, He says, you got to walk in the Spirit. To walk means everything you say and do, your, what you do, comes up from the Holy Spirit. Walk is how you conduct your life, how you live your life. So you walk in the Spirit. Everything is, com comes from the Holy Spirit. And in order to do that, you and I have to be led by the Holy Spirit. That means He leads us. He prompts us. He guides us. And if we live by the Spirit, if you walk in the Spirit, that's when the fruit of the Spirit is manifested. The virtues of Christ. Christ is seen in our lives. You don't, you don't have to live under the law. That means you don't have to keep looking at, okay, the third commandment says, 
thou shalt not do this. Okay, I won't do it. No, you're not living under the law. You're living by the Spirit. You're leading you're, you're under His influence, under His leadership, under His guidance. And so you don't have to follow the law. You're living according to the Spirit. And when you do that, love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, goodness, all these things become evident in your life. So here's the second key for you and me as believers. To live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, be led by the Holy Spirit. How do you practice that? Just talk to Him. Holy Spirit, I'm about to do this. Please lead me. Holy Spirit, I'm about to do this. Please guide me. And be open to what He says. How He moves on you. There are times when you're Dealing with situations, you pray in the Spirit, and He gives you ideas. Do this, do this. For whatever in life, whether it's your workplace, whether it's a situation in your home, whether it's a situation in your finances, whether it's a situation in your family, in your marriage, or with your children, whatever. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Everything in your life, let it be under His guidance. So Holy Spirit, how do I do this? How do I handle this situation? Ask Him. He'll guide you. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Holy Spirit. That's why I love it. When you're praying in the Holy Spirit, you're praying in tongues. Holy Spirit gives you ideas. Do this. Do this. And that's how, as believers, we live from above, not from beneath. Are you with me? So, what do we talk about today? Worship team, please come. We said, you know, we must learn how to live out of our life in Christ. Out of that identity, out of that inheritance that God has given to us. And to live from above, not from beneath. And this has to do with us walking in what God has already completed for us. We are not striving for it, we are living out from it. And it's a big difference. That's the key to victorious living. Live from what God has completed for you. And in order to do that, first, we have to renew our mind. We have to train ourselves to think, think according to the ways and thoughts of God. That's possible through His Word. As you and I live by the Word of God, because the Word of God enables us to receive the ways and thoughts of God. So you train yourself in every situation. What does the Bible say? How must I think according to the ways and thoughts of God in this situation? If you don't know, ask somebody. They may be able to help you. They may be able to speak into your life and tell you, like, this is what the Bible says about this matter. And then you make a deliberate choice to live according to the ways and thoughts of God. And second, yield to the Holy Spirit. Let Him guide you. Talk to Him. Holy Spirit, help me. Give me ideas. Pray. And He will fill your mind with ideas, with thoughts. That, and, and, and guide you. He'll, his prompting will come from in your spirit. And He'll tell you what to do. And you choose to follow. Choose to obey the Holy Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. You're led by the Spirit. And as we renew our mind. And as you live in the Spirit, or live according to the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, you and I will live from above, from our identity and inheritance that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Next Sunday, we're going to continue this, talk about a few more things that the Bible tells us to do on how to live out this life in Christ. And with that, we are going to wrap this series up and hopefully, uh, you know, all of this will be put in a book for us so that we can go back and study. And, you know, one of the reasons uh, we want to put this, put things in a book is because we want the next generation or the generations that come after us. Should the Lord Jesus tarry so long, we want to make sure that they have the word of God for them to walk in it, you know, the sad thing in the church today, when I say church, I mean church worldwide, globally, there's, there's such a dilution of the Word of God. It's so hard to hear sound, solid Word being ministered to. 
And so one of the things in my heart is, God, I want to make sure for the generation that comes, generations that come after us, they need the Word of God. So we intentionally put all of this in print, keep it there, because when the young people come, they need solid food. And they shouldn't grow up on milk. They need the solid meat of God's Word. And that's one reason why putting a lot of time and effort into those things. Because we're not going to be here forever. The generations will rise up after us, and they need to grow up on good food spiritually amen so that's why we putting that effort as long as the lord jesus tarries make sure the church has the word of god to nurture it and grow up on i want you to take some time as just remain seated please for a few moments as we look to god and uh, as the worship team leads us i want you to pray and say god how can i apply what i heard today in my life because it's not about listening to a sermon or a message or a teaching from the Word. It's about you and me applying it in our lives. That's the best way to learn. So, pray and say, God, how can I apply what I heard today? Maybe there's something you heard that the Lord wants you to practice. Put, put right into, in, you are faced with a situation that you need to apply the Word. So, pray. Maybe in a situation you need to change your thinking. You came in one way, thinking about it one way. Now you're reminded of what the word says. And as you see it here, you say, okay, God, I'm going to change my thinking about this. I'm going to think according to the ways and thoughts of God. Not according to the counsel of man, but according to what God said, according to what the Word says. Or maybe you're not sure what to do. Say, pray, Holy Spirit, lead me. Well, please tell me, Holy Spirit, what should I do in this situation? The Bible says, be led by the Spirit. Can you lead me in this situation? Pray. The Holy Spirit will speak to you because He's with you. He's in you. He's your helper. He's your comforter. He will speak to you. So please take this time to apply the Word of God to your own life. I'll let the worship team lead us. And and take these few moments, please.
stand up if it's okay. do two things very quickly first just going to give an invitation for people to receive Jesus Christ into their lives there might be people inside the auditorium there could be people watching online so I'm going to take a few moments to do that and then after we're just going to pray and speak uh, the works of God into the, in the lives of people we believe in God who works miracles who heals, who delivers people. So we'll take a few moments to minister along those lines uh, before we dismiss. But I want us, all of us to be involved in this. It's not just a one-way thing that we do from here. But I want everybody to pray and say, God, today may souls be saved. People be saved, either inside this auditorium, maybe somebody came here not knowing who Jesus Christ is. Or people just came in here wondering what is church all about. So there could be somebody inside here. There could be people watching online. So I want everybody to pray. Say, God, gather people into your kingdom. And also then when we pray for healings, for miracles, I want you to pray and say, God, show your power. 
a minister touch people, heal and deliver. Let people do this together. And I'm just speaking to somebody, to people, you know, if you're new, uh, you came to see what church is about or what are these Christians doing. Now, if you're asking, does God love me? I can tell you what the Bible says, that God loves you so much that he gave Jesus to die for you, that God shows his love for you by Christ dying for you. If you ask the question, how can I have my sins forgiven? I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says everyone who believes in Jesus, to them, they receive forgiveness of sins. And Jesus is the payment for our sins and the sins of the whole world. If you ask the question, what is the way to God? I can tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through me, through Jesus. If you ask the question, what, what must I do? Or how can I become a child of God? I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, as many as who receive Jesus, to them he gives the power to become the children of God. If you ask the question, how can I, where can I find salvation? I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name given under heaven among men by which we can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. If you ask, what must I do to be saved? I can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. This is what the Bible says. And so this morning, if there's anybody here in this auditorium watching online, having heard what I've said from the Bible, if you want to make a choice to believe in Jesus Christ, your choice, nobody is inducing you, forcing you, or compelling you to make this choice. It's your choice to believe in Jesus. Then as a step as a way of expressing this decision, I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if you've never prayed this prayer before, you can pray this with me. Let's pray. If there's anybody here this morning, you want to believe in Jesus Christ. You feel in your heart, I want to believe in this Jesus. Could you pray this prayer with me? If you've never done this before, to say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know you died for my sins on the cross. That you were buried and you rose up again. And you're alive today. Forgive my sins. Come into my life. Make me a child of God. And help me to follow you and you alone for the rest of my life. And I have made this decision in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody, you pray this prayer with me for the very first time in your life. Very first time. I just want you to raise your hand. Anybody, you pray this prayer with me. Wonderful. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. You pray this prayer with me. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. Raise it. Anybody else in this auditorium? Okay, God bless you. We have one person here. Thank you for doing that. We celebrate with you. And we thank God for you. Right up here in front of so Thank you. God bless you. All right, we're going to pray. And I, I just want to pray right now and speak into your life uh, God's Word. Um, you know, it, last Sunday, one person came and just shared a quick testimony with me. Uh, when church was open earlier in the year during January, February, March, for a short period, we were open. We had in-person services. And uh, he had come up for prayer. And he, his knee and leg was... He had an accident, actually. And uh, it was a pretty bad accident. He came up and uh, we prayed for him. Our pastors were here. We prayed. So he said when he went back home, that same day, that same day, he, he was able to, uh, you know, squat. Like he could bend the knee and he could completely do that. So he came and shared with me last Sunday. And this happened during the lockdown. 
And it was just a simple prayer that we prayed on the stage. Uh, the pastor's here were praying. And he said, you know, God had worked a work of healing for him that day. That same day when he went back home, he could t- took off those things and he could sit and there was no pain comfortably. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Our Lord Jesus is still the healer. He's still the deliverer. We are not part of a religion. We believe in the living Jesus. We believe in Jesus who works miracles, who heals, who intervenes in life situations. And uh, you see, we are, we are just human vessels. There's nothing big about us. But we cooperate. We work with him. Do what he wants us to do. And he works miracles. He does things in our lives. Today, I'm going to just speak some things from here. And if Roshan, you want to share anything on your heart, go ahead and do that. I feel there's a warmth in my feet. Um, I'm not particularly sure if it's something wrong with the ankle or not, but uh, um, right now I also believe that your feet is warm um, and then God is right now healing and touching um, your feet. And also someone with a breathing condition um, with something challenging with your respiratory a system. Uh, God is touching that. He's breathing His breath into your lungs right now. Amen. Um, amen. 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 And uh, s- something else about the addiction. I'm not, once again, I'm not very sure about which addiction it is. And uh, you've been uh, criticizing yourself and uh, guilt tripping. Uh, but God is calling you a holy person right now. Um, in Jesus' name, I declare that over you that you are no longer addicted to whatever amen. it is that you think you are addicted. Amen. Um, you, in Jesus' name, are a holy person. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord, we declare healing on these, on these conditions that Roshan just spoke about. People who have problems with the legs, whatever the cause is, in Jesus' name, we declare healing. People with problems in their breathing and the, respira- and the respiratory functions, we declare healing. Receive your healing. I'm breaking of all these addictions and freedom and Uh, No more guilt, shame, condemnation. We declare, we come into agreement with these words that have been spoken. Thank you for what you're doing, doing, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You know, even if you're addicted to sleeping pills, sleeping tablets, and if that's something you have to have every night to put you to sleep, may you be delivered from it in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord bless you. Because the Bible says the Lord gives his beloved sleep. So Lord, even release people from that. Release, release. Let, the, let God bless his people with sweet sleep at night. If that's you, just all you have to do is say, Lord, I receive that for me. I receive that. Thank you. I also just want to speak and just declare God's word. Just two more things. One is for... If, you know, for those who are in a situation that seems like you're in a place of defeat, I want to just speak victory into your life. That today when you go from this place, even though at the moment in the natural it may seem like you're in a place of defeat, things are bad, and it seems like it's, it's hard. And you leave this place with a sense of victory. Lord, I'm coming through this situation as a winner. And I'm just going to speak God's word. Now, and if, it, if, it's, if you are in that situation, I, I want you to come in agreement and say, God, I believe, I receive it. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, for those who might find themselves in a place where it's seemingly like they are defeated, today I speak your word that through our God, we shall do valiantly. I speak your word into their lives that God always causes them to triumph in Christ, that they will triumph in Christ. Their next step will lead them out of defeat into victory because you always cause your people to triumph. And so God, I speak victory into their life situation. I speak victory into their life situation and let their next step make defeat a thing of the past. Let their next step make defeat a thing of the past. 
they step into a broad place, a place of victory, God, for them. In the name of Jesus, send your mighty work into their life situation, causing them to triumph. We thank you, Father. And we bless you, God. Father, I also take prayer right now into the families, into families. And we're going to pray right now for our children, for sons and daughters. So if you're a parent, you're here. I want you to just come in agreement with me. We have a right to believe God for our sons and daughters, for our children. The Bible says that our children are an inheritance from God. It's God has given them to us and the devil is not going to have them. The Bible says that children are a reward from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is, is a reward. A reward brings honor, brings joy. Our children will bring us honor. They'll bring us joy. The Bible says that our children are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. They are aimed and released for one thing, to fulfill the purposes of God on their life. And the Bible says that our children will turn the enemies back. That means our children will be victorious over the enemies of their lives. Whatever they are facing, whatever their enemy is, our children have been declared by God that they will turn the enemies back at the gate. Our children will be victorious over their enemies. So I want you to come in agreement with me, parents. Today we are speaking over our children. We are declaring that our children are an inheritance given to us by God. The devil and the world will not have them. We are declaring that our children are a reward. They will bring us joy and honor. We are declaring that our children have been aimed and released to fulfill the purposes of God. We are declaring that our children are, will, turn, will, have, will be victorious over their enemies. We declare that our children are taught by the Lord and they have great peace. In the name of Jesus, I come in agreement with every household, every family. And we declare children in the house of God will be strong in the Lord. They will be flourishing in the ways of our God. We declare God's word that our children, we and our children are for signs and for wonders among the nations of the earth. We declare God's word over our children that God pours His blessing upon our offspring his spirit upon our seed we declare over our children that the anointing upon us and the word that is in our mouth will pass on to our children and to our children's children even according to the way word of god we declare the word of god onto every family and every household every every son and daughter that is represented here this morning. We speak the word of God and we declare to the enemy, you will not touch any son or daughter belonging to people in this household. In the name of Jesus, we call every son, every daughter into the family of God. And we announce to you, Satan, release your hand. Release them. They do not belong to you. They are our inheritance and we have dedicated them to the Lord. And we announce to the spirit of this age that you will not touch our sons and daughters, but they are taught by the Lord that the Holy Spirit is upon them. And the Holy Spirit teaches them and guides them and leads them in all their ways. We declare that our children will be mighty on the earth. They will be people of honor, of influence, of integrity, of great success, of great wealth, of great accomplishments for the kingdom of God. Because it is written that our children will be mighty on the earth. And Father, I thank you that none of these words spoken in the lives of each and every household, none of these words will return to you void. But every household will have celebration. Every household will have great rejoicing because they see their sons and daughters coming into the ways of the Lord, coming into the ways of the house of God. Because Father, your word says that in the house of the righteous, there is a voice of rejoicing and salvation. And so shall it be in every family and everyone said amen amen let's give God praise father we thank you for your word your word is fulfilled your word is accomplished your word will not return to you void and we thank you father in Jesus name amen amen you know when God does something in your life he just encourage you 
to share a testimony, send an email to testimony at abcw.org. It'd be great for us to hear from you. Whether it's a healing, it's a miracle, whatever God does, just share it and we'll be happy to share with others. Let's close. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources including sermons, sermon notes, publication, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.